Hello, advanced students. So I know you've done exponents before and you're wondering why is Kate making me do this again? Um, so just looking at this, I want to show you how what we did, the very simple math we did in the intro to exponents lesson actually applies for you for college. So we don't generally see this style of example on the GED itself, although it is technically on the list of skills they could test. So you'll likely see it in your... Um, practice activities if you're using any of the standard GED books, but I don't actually expect you it to come up on the test. However, however, <laughs> it always comes up in college algebra. It's one of those things you are just expected to understand for college algebra. So that's why we are tackling it. Um, and most of you guys who are in that advanced level are really um, college bound. Even my students who aren't in the advanced level are college bound, just maybe not so quickly. But anyway, let's go ahead. Let's take a look. It says use the product, quotient, or power rule to simplify. And these are three rules that your college algebra professor is going to expect you to remember. But what often happens with students is when you guys just try to memorize rules, you mush them together, you mix up when to use what, and students get really confused. So my thought, which is always my thought, really, is that there's actually not rules to math, at least not nearly as many as you guys think. We're not just sitting around making up rules in math. We're noticing patterns. So when I talk about the product quotient or power rule, what mathematicians are talking about is noticing the pattern of the way exponents behave when we're multiplying. Product means a multiplication expression. Um, when we're dividing, quotient is a division expression or it's simplified answer, as you guys often call it. And power, now, of course, we're talking about what happens when we take something that already has an exponent, so I don't know, a number that already has an exponent, and we raise it to another power. We're taking an exponent and we're raising it to a power. Okay, so looking at that, we're looking for the pattern of what happens. In order to discover the pattern, let's go back to the definition. Let's go back to the expanded form. Now, I picked these two problems, which look identical to a lot of students for a reason, because they're not identical. And knowing what to do with them is going to depend on you recognizing which one of these is actually multiplication, and which one of these is actually an exponential expression being raised to another power. So notice here, take a look at this first one. This says m to the fifth in parentheses. This is an exponential expression. And then that whole thing in parentheses is being raised to the sixth power. This is an example of when we might need the power rule. I have an exponential expression being raised to a power. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. But now let's go visually look at the difference with the one on the bottom. Looks the same to a lot of students, and so a lot of students mix these two up. But it's not quite the same. Take a look at this. We still have m to the fifth in this first parentheses here, but the whole thing is not being raised to the sixth power. The whole thing is just shoved up against this next exponential expression, m to the sixth power. And we know that when two things are shoved up together next to each other with nothing in between them, they are multiplying. So this sucker actually says m to the fifth power times m to the sixth power. This is a multiplication problem. And so it would call for the product rule, not the power rule. Now, that being said, even if you could recognize that, you would still have to have the rules memorized, and a lot of students don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that lovely expanded form that we looked at in the um, Intro to Exponents video in order to find the very same pattern that mathematicians found in order to simplify these things. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do the bottom one first because it's simpler to think about is think about what m to the fifth power means. So I'm going to keep my parentheses just like it had, and I'm going to expand m to the fifth power out as repeated multiplication. Remember, um, another way to think about an exponent is as repeated multiplication. So m to the fifth power is the same as 5m's multiplying. Oh, can I squeeze it in there? 
Now, remember what we had also said besides that, that if this m to the fifth power was shoved up again to the m to the m to the sixth power, we're still just multiplying. So now I have these five m's multiplying, multiplying with six more m's. And so basically we have, um, I don't even need parentheses. I didn't have one before. We have that with six more m's multiplying. M, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we can see when we write it out this way that all we have here are m's multiplying, which is neat because, well, we could use an exponent to talk about this. How many m's do we have multiplying? Well, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. m to the eleventh power. Now, I used the expanded form to notice the pattern, but a lot of mathematicians are lazy. They don't want to use the expanded form, you know, every time they want to go straight from the expression up here to the answer, and that's why you memorize the product rule, not because it's some weird math that mathematicians made up to make you memorize things, but just because we're lazy and we like a shortcut, we're like, oh, I noticed the pattern. I'm going to apply it. And that's if, if you already have five M's multiplying and you go and multiply with six more M's multiplying, I now have a total of 11 M's multiplying. Yeah, the product rule says just add the exponents. When multiplying exponential expressions, you guys can write it all the way out in your notes, but I don't have enough space. When multiplying exponential expressions with like bases, notice I had a like base. They both were m's. It was some number of m's multiplying. We can just go ahead and add the exponents. We're just counting up how many m's are multiplying. And so that feels weird to students. Why do we add to multiply? Well, because the exponent was telling us how many m's were multiplying. So we already had five m's multiplying, and now we put in six more m's multiplying. So now we have a total of 11 m's multiplying. Now, let's compare that to one, the one above that. That's a little different, and it's actually going to take me a lot of space to write. So you guys are going to have to um, humor me a little bit as I go to write this out. So I'm just gonna expand this part first, the part in the parentheses, okay? So we already know, we did it before, that if you have m to the fifth power, it basically means five m's multiplying. So there it is. Uh, m times m times m, I wanna say, mmm, delicious. But anyway, sorry. So m times m times m times m times m. But take a look, this time I'm not multiplying by m to the sixth power. This time I'm raising this whole thing to the sixth power, which means this whole thing six times. So you guys are gonna get bored with me writing it, but I need to write this whole expression multiplying six times. So five m's, that's once, there's twice, Three times, some of you guys see where I'm going with this. The rest of you are just going, mm, mm. I'm trying to keep you occupied while I write all these M's. I regret my life decisions with the big exponents here. Mm. <laughs> Let's see. So I have these five M's written six times yet. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, dear goodness, I need one more. Can I put them up here? Now you see why we don't like to use the expanded form for this. Okay. Oh, whoa. I put too many. <laughs> okay. So five M's written six times and they're all multiplying now, but oh my goodness, we got to count them. So let's see. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 M's multiplying when I write this out in expanded form. So, oh my goodness, I could write M to the 30 power. Now, I already know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Kate, dear Lord, really? <laughs> Could you please just tell us the shortcut? There's no way I'm going to write this many M's on my paper. And I could totally mess up, you know, how many times I count. I mean, you add an extra M yourself and you for almost forgot to do one of the groupings. So what a lame way to do it. And again, I'm not telling you to write it out in expanded form every time. I'm telling you, if and when you forget the rules... It's easy enough to recreate the rule because look what just happened. I wrote five M's 
six times. <laughs> Say that again. I wrote five M's six times. So what does that power rule say? Well, did you hear me use the word times twice? <laughs> the power rule says that when you're raising an exponential expression to another power, just multiply the bases. I mean, multiply the exponents, sorry. So to raise an exponential expression to another power or to a power, multiply the exponents. And this should kind of feel right, because let me just show you, come over here to the left with me since I ran out of space. Look at this interesting thing. Do you see like if you ignore this M altogether up in the sky, it looks like the problem five times six. I mean, that's not what this whole problem is. This whole problem is M to the fifth times the sixth power. But just looking at it right there can help us to remember that to simplify this, I could simply multiply five times six. Five M's multiplying six times is a total of 30 M's multiplying. Wonderful, wonderful. All that to say, yeah, by all means, memorize your rules. It's no wonder your college teacher teaches them to you so that you don't have to write all these M's all over the paper like Kate did. <laughs> okay. However, don't be divorced from understanding when it comes to math. You need to understand, you need to see that all these rules, they're just patterns. They're patterns. And if I can notice them, if this mathematician can notice them, you can notice them too. And you can use that when you forget stuff. Um, and so, yeah, this expanded form, so, so valuable. All right. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math question, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.